Bay's offense came to life Sunday versus Minnesota, pounding out a season high 19 hits and scoring 11 runs. Tonight, Tampa Bay returns to interleague play as they travel into Atlanta facing slugger Freddie Freeman and the Braves. The Rays are one stop closer to home on this five-game road trip as we greet you from Atlanta, Georgia, and Turner Field for game one of this two-game set between the Rays and the Atlanta Braves. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to an evening of Rays baseball, interleague baseball, with Brian Anderson. I'm Dwayne Stats. So good to have you looking in. Well, the Rays will take on the Atlanta Braves, a new-look Braves ball club not necessarily the top offensive team in the National League. They're in the middle of the pack, but they've been very good in clutch situations, and Freddie Freeman has led the charge there. Well, you think about Freddie Freeman imposing. Six feet, five inches tall, likes the ball down, out over the plate, and when he gets it there, he is extremely productive. He leads this team in average, runs batted in. He's second in home runs and on-base percentage. I'm going to tell you something right now. He's been really hot lately, too. You go back over his last 20 games, he's hit safely in 17 of them, while 10 have been multi-hit games. So they're going to have their hands full with Freddie Freeman. Erasmo Ramirez, what can you say about this guy? Coming off of his best outing of the year, the height of efficiency. You see the line right there. Five innings, one hit, no runs. He did it on 68 pitches, really pounded the strike zone, and then took the change up down below the zone for chases. Erasmo will look to pitch it. Once again, that efficient. Go out there, get a win tonight, and an M&M shower after this one, baby. Well, you take a look at the pitching matchup. Romero is opposed by a hard-throwing right-hander. Mike bolton is on the hill with a record of 2-0. and Some of the race farmhands saw him at Durham. So they have a little extra scouting report on him. Two outings against the Durham Bulls. For Tim Beckham, something of a homecoming. He hails from nearby Griffin, Georgia. He will have a large contingent here in Atlanta tonight. And when we return, Emily Austin will take a look at the Beckham homecoming.
that he's been to a handful of games here at Turner Field, but he will take the field for the first time ever as a major league player tonight. He has about 30-plus family and friends attending tonight's game. He was the first overall pick in the 2008 draft. Like I said, just lived 45 mile, or 36 miles outside of the field. I graduated from Griffin High School. Here are his thoughts on taking the field at Turner Field for the first time as a major league player. Well, I'll be playing in front of a lot of people that uh, grew up watching me, and uh, it's just always, always good to play in front of family and a lot of people that you know. Yeah, uh, my high, old high school, both of my old high school coaches, uh, Jamie Cassidy, Sal Argilla, my summer ball coach was kind of like my mentor growing up as well. That's Anthony Dye, and um, so like I said, it's gonna be good to see everyone, man. I know they're very proud of me, and they know how hard I've worked, and uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Beckham coming off the bench tonight. If he gets the chance to pinch hit, the numbers look good. He was hitting 471 with three home runs and seven RBIs off the bench. We'll see how it turns out. The Braves and the Rays taking on at Turner Field. Dwayne and B.A. up next. A two-game set before the Rays return home on Thursday to Tropicana Field. Let's take a quick look at the starting lineups presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Kevin Kiermeyer will lead it off, followed by Stephen Susie Jr. and then and then Evan Longoria. James Loney hits cleanup. Slogan Forsyth at second. David DeJesus at left. As Drupal Cabrera hits seventh. The number eight hitter is Rene Rivera. And Erasmus Ramirez here in the National League Park will bat ninth and do the pitching. Mike Boltanevich, a hard throwing right hander on the hill. And the first pitch of this game is a fastball in there for a strike. 80 degrees here in Atlanta as we are underway. Foul ball, and Kiermeyer quickly 
behind the young right-hander, 0-2. Well, you see Fultanovich, you see his numbers here, making his fourth start of the season. The 2-0 record pops a little bit. None of the other numbers really do, but what will be popping tonight, Dwayne, and you know this, is the radar gun. This right-hander has a big-time power fastball. And a breaking ball dropped into right field just fair inside the line at Kiermaier around second. He's going to go for three, and he's going to make it. A three-base hit hustling all the way. Kevin Kiermaier. You know what? You, you come over uh, to the National League, and granted, this is Nick Markakis, and he should know better, but Kevin Kiermaier was smelling triple all the way out of the box because he laid this ball softly up the right field line, and watch him turn it on right there. He's making his decision, and boy, he had extra gear, and he's in there easily. Third triple of the year for Kiermaier, and just like that, the Rays with an early scoring opportunity. Here's Steven Sousa Jr. He misses the fastball up and that one registers at 96. And the one thing to watch with Fultinovich is the fact that that big time fastball but he can get erratic with the command. We've seen you know those numbers on there. 10 walks in 19 innings of work here with the Braves and that's been troublesome for him his whole journey. Popped up foul that will carry out a play. And the count is nothing and two. Well, the Navy's pitched two games against the Durham Bulls. He lost to them one to nothing and four to two. Right back into the screen. Still 0 2. His most recent outing. Was a no decision at a four to three Atlanta loss. He pitched six and two thirds in that one against the Reds, gave up three runs, two earned. And it was his error on a double play ball that cost him a win. Ground ball sharply hit past third and up the left field side. Kiermeyer scores. Sousa with a big turn decides to hang on with a single. The stands protruding out toward the left field line. And that ball kicked against that low wall. Otherwise, it was headed for the corner. Now, it's a slider. It does not slide. That ball just spinning up there stays middle of the plate, allows Souza Jr. to get the head out. He rips it by Siriaco down at third base. Kiermeyer is going to walk in. And the Rays, a quick start here against the Braves. Here's Evan Longoria. Evan, after the first pitch, skies it into short right. That's Marcakis under it. And that is out number one. Well, let's take a look at that Atlanta Brave defense brought to you by BMW. In the outfield left to right, we have Todd Cunningham, Cameron Maben, and Nick Marcakis. Across the infield, third to first, Pedro Siriaco, Andrelton Simmons, Jace Peterson, and Freddie Freeman with A.J. Pierzynski behind the plate. Now James Loney to face the hard-throwing right-hander. Fulton Avich came to the Braves from the Houston Astros. He was involved in the Evan Gaddis trade. Well, you talk about new faces on a ball club. The Braves have a lot of them. Now they were busy all winter. They were busy into the spring. Some late trades, that Evan Gaddis trade. Lifted into short left. That's going to fall for a base hit. A turn at second by Sousa. He holds on. Cunningham up with it in shallow left. And Loney is aboard. Now James Loney, who's been red hot now with a six-game hitting streak, hitting... Over 470 during the course of that streak. And when you're hot, these are the kind of hits that drop in. Off the end of the bat, a little soft serve out into left field. And the raise with another threat. Rays going to see a couple of the young Braves pitchers here in this two-game set. And you see the... Uh, the breakout so far this year through three starts. Lefties 400 and right-handed hitters 172. 
There's the strike. And both Loney and Kiermeyer with hits. Souza had the base hit past the bag at third. See Fulton Avich keeping an eye on Sousa Jr. Those 19 innings of work, there have been seven stolen base attempts. Team's busy against him. And that pitch broke into the dirt, and Forsyth could not check. Tony Randazzo says that's a strike. He went around. Well, when he's able to get that slider going because of the velocity on the fastball, you know, as a hitter, you've got to get it started early. Your hands have to be quick. Your thinking has to be extremely quick, and if he presents that slider well, he'll get those chases a lot. Fly ball back into right field. Marquez backs up to make the catch and back to tag Souza, but he misstepped as he got back to second. His push-off foot slipped, and so he's still at second. You know, he, he struggled with this a few games ago, not tagging up on a ball that was hit deep. And watch this. Uh, late, gets back to the bag late, and you can see that foot glides right across the top of the bag. He had the right idea, was a little too far off, made a late decision to go back, and it cost him another opportunity to move up. And when you got a guy on the mound who has trouble with command, He'd like to be 90 feet away in case one skips to the screen. Here's David DeJesus. Strike at the knees. DeJesus with men in scoring position. 421. 319 overall. Pickoff play at second, and it hits Souza. Souza hit by that pickoff attempt. And flat on his back out there, he appears to be all right. Boy, that can be scary. Well, we know that Tenovich has such a big arm, and he lets this fly. And it hit Souza upper back. Right, not right in the middle of the back. Walton Avish apparently thinking that zero and 20 was a target. Well, he hit a moving target. <laughs> Maybe should have been a quarterback. One strike to count on David DeJesus. One and one. If the tag up play gets done correctly, that's not an issue. Mm -hmm. That bruise was because you didn't tag up and go to third. No one to blame but himself. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. You know, that, that's the one thing, and, and getting that opportunity to have played in the National League and, and do some base running. It, it, base running, you've got to have your head on a swivel, especially if you're a guy that comes in. Teams know that you can steal a base. They know you're an aggressive base runner. They're going to try everything they can to keep you close, keep you from running. There's a lot to digest out there. And he drops that one in. Breaking pitch. Now two and two. He's thrown 16 pitches. They've all been strikes of one sort or another, except the two pitches he missed with here in this at bat by DeJesus. Coming in, 10 walks in 17 innings and 16 strikeouts. He'll be making another 2 2 pitch to DeJesus. Well, the one thing that this Rays lineup has already done is, number one, they've gotten on the board against him. They put him in the stretch immediately, had to throw some high leverage pitches early, and they've allowed everybody in the dugout and half the lineup to see all of his pitches. We've seen everything but the changeup, the two breaking balls and the heater. And the Jesus did not go. 
close. And the count is full. Well, this is going to be off the plate away. And to Jesus. Oh, got away with one. Ray's got a break there. Anytime you see David on that half swing go to the smile, he went too far. Because <laughs> he did it again right there. This time, it works out for him. Three, two, and he taps it. So we'll see another one after the foul ball. Well, how about this? Best record in the major leagues when scoring first. The Astros and the Cardinals 16 and 2, and the Rays are 15 and 2. And the pressure's on because they're on the board. The Jesus fouls it away. In many ways, a typical David De Jesus at bat. This will be the ninth pitch coming, the next one. This is why, when you saw the graphic of what he's done with runners in scoring position, you think about the guys who change their approach and are good situational hitters. David De Jesus, James Loney, work at bats, hit the ball the other way. Ground ball headed to short. Wrong guy to hit it to. Simmons makes the play. Ray settled for one run on three hits. They leave two. Bottom of the first coming. Kiermaier. And we go to the bottom of the inning. Let's take a look at the Atlanta lineup presented by your Southern Four Dealers. Jace Peterson's going to lead it off. Pedro Siriaco in second. Rudy Freeman third. Then Nick Markakis, the cleanup hitter in front of Todd Cunningham. A.J. Przinski does the catching. Handles it. Simmons is the shortstop. Cameron Maven will hit eighth and play center. And the pitcher bats ninth. Rasmo Ramirez on the hill for the Rays. Well, here is Peterson batting 284. First pitch from Ramirez is a ball. One. Well, there's the body of work for Erasmo Ramirez. What he needs to do is get a quick out and lower that ERA. Outside of that, he's been throwing the ball tremendously lately. Think about what he's done after those first two outings of the year. Two and two. And picking up the pace, throwing strikes. 
He gave up 15 earned runs in his first five and a third innings on the season. That puts you in an immediate big hole. And over the last eight appearances, a 142 earned run average. Full count to Peterson. And how about that? That's covering 19 innings of work, just under 13 pitches an inning. Well, I think he felt coming here, he was pitching for his life, and there was a lot of pressure, and he appeared to be very cautious out there. And as a result, was falling behind a lot of hitters. Yep. And, you know, not overpowering. Cannot pitch that way. Fly ball toward the line and left. De Jesus is there and makes the catch. Well, let's take a quick look at the Rays defense as it lines up tonight. Brought to you by BMW. In the outfield, left to right, De Jesus, Kiermeyer, and Sousa Jr. across the infield. Field third to first, Longoria, Cabrera, Forsyth, and Loney with Rene Rivera behind the plate. Well, here's Pedro Siriaco. He's in a third base tonight. Just strike. Remember a few years ago when Bobby Valentine saw Siriaco in the Boston Red Sox camp in the spring and fell in love with his high energy. There's Cabrera at shortstop throwing him out. So Suriaco's the second out of the inning. Two up and two down. Suriaco originally with the Pittsburgh organization, then that stint with Boston, then San Diego, Kansas City, and now here in Atlanta. Well, bouncing around, getting another opportunity up the top of the order. In front of this man right here, who's been doing the bulk of the damage for the Atlanta Braves. Freddie Freeman hitting 313. Braves have the shift on and a cut to miss. Strike one. Boy, big swing, and then everybody, as you could well imagine, all the way over. Evan Longoria on the left side to protect against that bunt, now backing up. 0 2. And now with two strikes, the flip flop. Longoria goes to the first base side of second. Cabrera back to the shortstop side. That has everything to do with Freddie Freeman and will he or won't he lay one down. Evan Longoria is so good at charging those balls with the bare hand. And now when you feel like that's not an option, all of a sudden you put your shortstop back where he belongs and Evan takes that other position. Out of play. We'll see another two strike pitch. I, I, I had to go to Tom Foley and say, listen, what's up? <laughs> why are you getting so tricky out there? And he said, hey, listen, it's all about defending that bunt. It's a ball and two strikes. And even that might only be a half truth. I'm sure there's something else hidden in there. Yeah, they're not going to tell us everything. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Tom Foley, the bench coach for Kevin Cash. Line drive, and it's going to be caught by Forsyth. A liner right into the teeth of the ship. One, two, three, go the Braves. Braves lead, one nothing.
Places by Sea Dew. Sea Dew Spark, the most affordable watercraft on the water. And Kona Brewing Company, one life right. Don't blow it. Mahalo. Rays lead, one nothing on to the second inning. Rays start this night running second in the East, one full game behind the New York Yankees. First pitch to Cabrera is a strike. The Yankees are on the road against the Washington Nationals, and the Nationals have taken a 2 0 lead at the end of an inning. Freeman bobbles it, but has a lot of time and makes the play unassisted. So, if the Rays could win this one and the Nationals could beat the Yankees, the Rays would be in a tie for first place, and we're at the quarter mark in this season. The Rays coming in. Playing their 40th game of the year right. tonight. How long ago has it been since you got to that point you're talking about? And only two teams in the American League East have a winning record. Yep. That is not the norm. Rene Rivera misses the fastball in the mid 90s. Strike one. Yeah, this has been a quick 40 games. Well, it's been an eventful 40 games. The Rays. <laughs> When you talk about injuries, and that's what we've had a lot of conversation about. In fact, the Rays to this point, they've used one player for each game. They've used 40 players this year. This is the 40th game. We've already used 40, a quarter of the season in. And and what makes it even more mind-boggling was the fact, like you said, they're one game out of first place with a winning record. I mean, a team that usually goes through something like that is... You know, I mean, eight, ten games under. Well, Rivera out on strikes that 96 mile per hour fastball up and into him. Two outs and Erasmo Ramirez will bat. He's 0 for 6 in his career, and then he gets to face a guy who throws 96. And seemed to be pretty happy about it. Although you very rarely see him with anything but a smile. Him and David DeJesus running neck and neck for most on the season. One and one. That fastball to Ramirez at 96 must seem like about the size of an M&M. Cut Cutting the miss. Now one and two. Cut the miss. He's out on strike. We go to the bottom of the second. It's one nothing Rays. Checkers 
Get Checkers Authentic Philly Cheese Steak or try the new Meatball Sub. Pick yours, two for five bucks. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Courtesy Toyota, you'll love what we do for you. Well, the Rays get their first look at Nick Marcakis in an Atlanta Braves uniform after seeing him all those years playing for the Baltimore Orioles. Marcakis hitting cleanup for Atlanta. Yeah, different spot. You see him with Baltimore at his best. He was hitting leadoff. And now here in the run producing position. Rivera, a quick trip to the mound here to chat with Ramirez after he falls behind Marquez. Just two pitches. So obviously, Rene Rivera saw something with Erasmo Ramirez and his mechanics trying to make a quick fix. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, we notice all the time about Rivera. He is quick on the draw when it comes to working with his pitchers out there. Well, you know that comes with the blessing of Jim Hickey and Kevin Cash. He's out there working with these guys. He knows their mechanics as good as anybody. It's at least directional coming right at you. And so if he sees a little something off, he's got that green light to head out. That's a strike. Three and one. And that helps a lot because it, it helps the pitcher. It keeps Jim Hickey in the dugout. He doesn't have to make an early visit. Yeah, and if he's that quick to notice things like that, two pitches, a trip to the mound, it, it prevents something from getting out of hand way before. You know, if he goes 3 and all, if he walks the guy, then you go out, well, damage is done. He walks him here, and the leadoff man is on. Well, you're trying to prevent the game from speeding up on somebody and he went out there quick it looked like Erasmo was going to make a recovery but he ended up with the lead off walk things that you want to avoid now you try to keep that lead off man off the bases and that's what Rivera was thinking when he went out there as quickly as he did but a walk and here is Todd Cunningham and he takes the pitch down and all Todd Cunningham has done is, how about that? He's been up for three games, eight out of 12. Yeah, it was recalled on the 15th. He has great speed. They say he can, he can fly. The end of the corner, that's a fair ball. Marquez will go to third. And now they're going to wave him around. And now a stop. And Bo Porter had put up the stop sign. And then wanted him to go, and by that time he had shut it down. Well, and, and you know what? Bo Porter was right the second time. He should have been going. Nick Marquez had a full head of steam. He read this properly, knowing that Sousa Jr. is not going to be close to it anytime soon. And he could have scored him here. But you're right, the initial stop sign, Nick Marquez picks him up, shuts it down, and not going to pick it back up at that point. A double into the right field corner. And now the Braves, who've been so good with men in scoring position, have two runners in scoring position with nobody out for A.J. Przinsky. America's catcher. He is a thorn in the side of anybody he plays against. Fouls this one back, strike one. And he's 9 out of 20 with men in scoring position. Play 0 2. The Braves hitting 260 overall, 299 with men in scoring position. Well, and that's they've taken up their runs per game almost a full run over last year's pace because of that stat. And he's hit by the pitch. That's another thing he's famous for. Now, you're down in the count 0-2. Oh, you've got the body armor going up the right arm. And 
he took this one like a champ on purpose. Knows it's coming in, just kind of lean that elbow down, know that it's protected. Hey, you make a guy go away with the body armor, not so apt to do something like that. May not be able to throw for a month. So the bases are loaded. Again, he's a thorn in your side if you play against him. And here's Simmons, the shortstop. That's a strike. Simmons hitting 264. Premier shortstop. And the big contact guy. No two. Well, you, you could see it in that swing. The way he just kind of lengthened that thing out there, trying to put the ball in play. That's something that this Atlanta Brave team across the board has done a great job of. And there's that number you mentioned. With all the contact he makes, he's also double play prone. He's grounded into 12. Two strikes, the count. And he takes a close pitch wide. One and two. And that's Erasmo Ramirez. You know, you think about the slider of Chris Archer, the depth it gets. Ramirez more of a sweeping type action. He'll take that thing all the way across the plate. I think the book on Angleton Simmons, as far as Erasmo Ramirez goes, is a lot of sliders. <laughs> then one after the other. Two, two. And again, he goes wide. And I think that was the changeup, and he yanked it. Now he loves his changeup to both righties and lefties, especially when you're talking about in that two strike position. And he went away from the slider, yanked the changeup. He needs a strike here. I don't care what it's with. Lines it foul out of play. So we'll see another one. would love to see is a ground ball right back to the mound. Foul ball straight back over the screen a fastball. I love your aggressiveness tonight. I mean forget just the ground ball for the double play but you're getting position specific and I like that. <laughs> It's Trying to get out of the inning with no runs being scored. You get a double play. Got a strikeout guy next. Maven on deck, although he's been battling that. And that pitch misses. And that will force home a run. He babied a slider. He's trying to throw a strike slider, and after the two previous that he threw earlier in the at-bat that he yanked off the plate, he kind of babied that to get it in there for a strike, and he didn't get it to break enough. That's, that's the problem. When you start to try to take off velocity with slowing down your arm speed, which isn't going to do what you want it to. So it's a visit from Jim Hickey. Maven. Bases are still loaded in a tie game. Well, the one benefit you have here, too, is you've got Fultonavich on deck, pitcher hitting in this kind of a situation. Make your pitches on Maven, and then you get the opportunity to go after the pitcher. Maven comes out swinging at a fastball and fouls it. Is loaded. 
Cunningham third, Brzezinski second, Simmons at first. Ground ball through the right side. Cunningham scores. Brzezinski stops at third. It's two to one. Maven, the ball that's up and away from him, and he can see the room on the right side. He just pokes it right through that hole, and everybody up 90 feet. Now, here comes the throw. Now, look, this throw gets through all the way to Rene Rivera, and you can see Erasmo Ramirez not backing that play up. That is a no no. Now, the pitcher, Fontenavich, takes a big cut and misses. Here's what you're talking about here. You know, it eludes James Loney, and it comes in hot to Rivera. Now, he's very good, but this is where Erasmo Ramirez is. He's not even paying attention. And now, yeah, now you realize, uh-oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Cut the miss. Breaking ball. 0-2. Right, one more slider to Fultonavich, and you're one out closer to getting out of this jam. Out on strikes. Oh, that that burns you up as a, as a pitcher. You go up there. And granted, it's a it's a big situation, but to get three straight sliders, you just don't have a prayer. That's Jace Peterson who opened the first with a fly ball to left. Braves got him from the Padres. And they like his makeup. He played football at McNeese State and has carried some of that mentality onto the baseball field. Out in front, strike one. Well, the first time through the order now, Ramirez has had three, three, two counts. The first one was to Peterson. Two in this inning. He's getting away from the little things that have made him successful recently over his last 19 plus innings. Pop. Foul. One and two. Uh, he got away with a, a, a pitch there that was out over the plate that Peterson had a pretty good swing at. Probably wishes he could see again. What's that? What that's done has gotten him into a good count now. One and two. Try to get Peterson here to chase. This is where the uh, the put away wipeout changeup comes into play. Way wide. Two and two. And he has not shown command of that pitch couple of them he's actually cut a little bit that one way up and away little tapper he's gonna have to take the out at first Loney steps on the bag not hit hard enough to come to the plate and the Braves get their third run of the inning Batted in for Peterson, his 16th. Just down, that ball down below the zone and the chopping action, even though it was Przinski running, it just takes all the steam off the ground ball and James Loney has no play. Well, here is Pedro Siriaco. Goes for it. Pops it into shallow center. Here comes Kiermeyer on the run to retire the side. Eight men come to the plate. Three runs score. Three one Atlanta.
Toyota Trends, the Rays coming off Sunday's explosion in Minnesota with 11 runs and 19 hits. One of those numbers with runners in scoring position. That was a long time coming. Kiermaier goes after the first pitch in the third and skies it to center. Maven makes the catch. One gone. How about uh, those 19 hits, 15 were singles. Yeah, no home runs in that uh, outburst, but plenty of offense nevertheless. Steven Sousa Jr. Rays had had 10 hits with men in scoring position in their previous five games combined. And did it in one afternoon. Well, the, the one thing that stood out was the overall approach of the lineup all day long. I mean, up the middle, the other way, everybody was doing. <laughs> Sousa picked up the run batted in with a single in the first. His 16th run batted in. Lines it into center. There's a base hit off a fastball. That one came in at 96, and Souza returns it to center field. He's two for two. Boy, everything with Souza Jr. is quick twitch. I mean, he can let it fly in a hurry. How aggressive he is on the base pass, the movements in the outfield, everything. And you're right, 96 down and away. And he's still able to get full extension and go right back up the middle. That's usually a pretty safe spot for a guy with a upper 90s mile an hour fastball. There goes Sousa. The pitch is down. The throw is late. And a stolen base. That's number six for Sousa. And six off Kutenovich. Slider down. A while to get out of the glove of Pierzynski. And Sousa easy. Got it with two legs. Side. Now it's Brzezinski headed to the mound. Sue's had bluffed a little start off second, trying to be a distraction to the 23 year old right hander. Well, there's been a lot of activity on the base paths with him on the mound. up the zone. Fulton Davich was in 16 games last year in the big leagues with Houston. All out of the bullpen. For just under 19 innings total. Now a move to second and back in. Souza with that hand extended got it in before the tag by Peterson. Well, watch Fulton Avich on this spin. Watch where he's stepping. Throwing all the way across his body. Remember the last one hit Sousa Jr. right in the middle of the back. This throw on the money. Ground ball headed toward the middle. Through in the center. Here comes Sousa. The Rays will have their second run. Evan Longoria driving home Steven Sousa Jr. And it's three to two. Yeah, old time baseball there. Base hit, steal second, grounder up the middle, and there's your run. We watch the middle infielders for the Braves too as they try to keep this ball in the infield. Simmons given great effort, then he had to immediately pop to his feet and peel back towards second base to keep Evan Longoria over at first. James Loney. Loney dropped a base hit into left in the first inning. That's 
It's a strike. Runner Rays playing in Atlanta for the first time since 2010. As they return to Turner Field. Rays through the years in interleague play have gone three and six here. The plate in this time. Rays with two runs on five hits. Atlanta with three runs on two hits. Well, both of these pitchers trying to settle in, and at this point, it's been a mixed bag. Some command issues, some good counts for the hitters. Count holding at one and two. Well, Loney now 10 of his last 20 with the base hit his first time up. He had four hits in the game on Sunday. I'll tell you what, you better have your head on a swivel when Fultonavich <laughs> throws a, a ball to the bag. Whether it's out at second base or over at first, his fastball to the bags are as hard as they are to home plate. He takes nothing off of it. Another foul out of play. Well, he's keeping an eye on Longoria. He's made three tosses over there. And Evan Longoria doesn't jump out as, you know, he's an opportunistic base stealer every now and then. But it's been the fact that he has been victimized six times already. He's just in his fourth start with the Braves this year. A little roller to the left side. Suriaco goes to second. Not in time at first. They called him out at second, too. And uh, let's see, Kevin comes out of the dugout. He might want them to take a look. Yeah, I, I don't. I thought for sure. I mean, he was absolutely in there. This ball hits slowly. You see the secondary lead of Evan Longoria gives him a good head start. Which certainly looks like he's popping up off the bag. And has beat the throw, but was called out. You see, Siriaco. Took him a little time to get the handle on that. And he's going to take a look at it for sure. Boy, it looked in real time like Evan had beat the throw. So we'll see. So the Rays will challenge the call. And if it doesn't get clearer than that, I don't know if you're going to get clear and convincing. Yeah, and that's the part of this whole experience that Kevin had a little difficulty with. He didn't like that proviso in the challenge rules. The Rays got out to that slow start challenging plays. Yeah, it's got to be cut and dry on the video, or as we've seen, the, the call on the field is will stand. Well, will Little made the call on the uh, left side of your screen. It's Jerry Davis, the crew chief, with the headset on. And I've been waiting to see if he'll be back out at second base or not. I, I don't like the Rays' chances based on the looks that we've seen. I hope I'm wrong. Well, they're 
Bears and it appears that they're close to getting word on the outcome of this one. The Rays have overturned two. A little bit of 14 challenges. Here's another look. Oh, here's a good, good shot of it. Well, you based just, on that, but you just don't see the foot on the bag, and that's where the clear and convincing burns the race. Circumstantial, you say, yeah, he's there, but they need to see it. And I don't know if we've had a look yet where you can definitively see it. Well, because of the lack of depth perception. You don't know exactly where the foot was. It took a long time for that throw to get down there, mm -hmm. and and you could you could project him being safe. Whether they're going to call him safe or not, we'll see. Well, out the call. The Rays do not prevail. And the call stands, not confirmed, but stands for lack of evidence. Clear and convincing evidence is what they needed. So two outs with Loney at first. And here is Logan Forsythe. Logan hit by a pitch and now up to second goes Loney and that'll put a man back into scoring position for the Rays. Fulton Avich just got around a slider. That thing just spun up there. Logan Forsythe just takes it. 90 feet move up and now David DeJesus been very good with runners in scoring position gets the shot here. Well, he had another good at bat before he grounded out in the first inning. Nine pitch at bat, and so he takes another look at the hard throwing right hander here in the third. Two men on with two men out, and it's popped into short left field for Cunningham, who makes the catch to retire the side. Rays get a run back, they trail three to two. New majestic cool base jersey that has moisture wicking and breathable stretch fabric so you can always keep your pool in the stands. Check it out at the Rays Downtown Tampa store or the Majestic Clubhouse Team Store at Tropicana Field. Freddie Freeman leading off the inning for Atlanta. One and 
no the count. Foul ball takes the count to one and one. Arcakis next and then Cunningham. Liner and it's caught by Forsyth. Second time that Logan has handled a ball off the bat of Freeman. This time he had to time that leap perfectly. A little hang time there for Logan Forsyth. Well, and you can see the frustration all over Freddie Freeman. You see where Forsyth is. Well, seven, eight years ago, he's two for two. 2015 right. and 0 for. There's that hang time. Listen, NBA playoffs in full swing. <laughs> Arcakis takes it inside. Boy showing off the skills. And boy, that's just another example of the great start Logan Forsyth has had. And the ability to play every day, the opportunity to play every day, really allows him and really anybody with that kind of ability gives him a great opportunity to realize the ability that they possess. Shot deep into right center field off Marquez's bat and right there is Kiermaier to make the catch. Over the shoulder headed straight to the wall and a little congratulations from Susan Jr. on that grab by Kiermaier. And that may be the best of the year when you had to see how far he had to go and how well struck this ball is by Marcakis. Watch him go over in the actual left center field. Really change of direction at the very end. Adjustment to the route. With the wide receiver. Now we're two feet in. <laughs> and no jump at the end. He had to haul to get there. Yeah, no time for the jump after that little veer. But you're right. What a great catch. And the ground he covered. That ball off the bat appeared to be a cinch, two base hit, maybe more, depending. Great catch by Kiermaier. And the only reason you think maybe not is because, you know, Kevin Kiermaier has elite speed, and he's able to get to high-end, top-notch speed very quickly. 3-1, the count to Cunningham. Who has arrived in Atlanta red hot. He replaced Kelly Johnson, who had to go to the disabled list. It's a chopper, third. Lagoria backs up and makes the throw. It's a one, two, three inning in the third. We're headed into the fourth, and it's three, two Atlanta. the game tonight in all season long tires plus donates a hundred dollars 
to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Get a look at his Jubal Cabrera. He's going to lead it off in the fourth against Mike Fultonavich. 23 year old right hander out of Sterling, Illinois. Cabrera bounced out to first, his first time up. Rays have left four men on base through. The first three innings and scored two runs. One strike to count. Rays are going to see two of the young pitchers on this Atlanta ball club. Williams Perez will pitch tomorrow night. One and one. Jake Odorizzi. Set to go to work for the Rays tomorrow and the wrap up game of the series and the road trip. It's a ball and two strikes. Don't miss tomorrow's Wednesday night showdown. It will be presented by Mazda. Motor is he goes for his fourth win of the year. And again, it will be Williams Perez. Making his first start of the year for Atlanta. He's worked some out of the bullpen. High shot deep to right. That one is gone. No doubt off the bat of Cabrera, his second home run of the year. And the game is tied at three. That ball, a shot off the bat of Cabrera. And for Fultonavich, it has been too many pitches out over the plate that have come back to haunt him. He himself has acknowledged that. And in a two strike count, boy, oh boy, belt middle, and no doubt about it, Marcakis, I don't think, got out of his stance. Well, he did, but that's about it. A long blast. Certainly one of the longer ones you'll see here to right field. Yeah, if you get up to the first walkway, <laughs> that is that is deep. You cross over that first walkway, it's mammoth, and that was real close. One and one to Rivera, big cut in the miss. Oh, he's behind in the count. That area that that ball ended up in, that is deep. When you get the perspective from home plate. Well, Rivera's out on strikes. Here's the ball off the bat. Number two, first one came at the trough in the series with the Texas Rangers. Ramirez waves and misses. Ramirez looking to give himself the lead. <laughs> well, he saw what happened with Cabrera up there. He might as well swing the bat. Time it up and let it go. You never know. And two. That's a strike on the outside part of the play. So a couple of strikeouts following the home run. The Yankees have scored four in the fourth on the Nationals. That's four to two New York now. Kiermaier. He bunts foul. Boy, if that's something that he can start to incorporate into his game with that ability, we talked earlier about how he gets to top spec speed so quickly. 
It doesn't even have to be a great bunt. Just be a good bunt, and he's going to be able to eat up a lot of hits. Upstairs. Yeah, there's no running start for Kiermaier. It's instant. It really is. There are certain guys that you just enjoy watching them run. And you used to love to watch Tony Womack hit a ball in the gap and leg out a triple. Love to watch Kevin Kiermeyer run the bases, take the routes in the outfield. They just glide. Sends one to center. Maven is there waiting. Rays tie this game on the home run off the bat of his Drupal Cabrera. We're headed into the bottom of the fourth. It's 3-3. Three, three. hasn't been in the lineup yet, but I was just talking with his dad here in the stands. Dwayne B.A., listen to this story. His dad said he was texting Tim before the game and said, son, we've been driving by this field for four years, three to four days every week for four years from Griffin to Marietta where he played ball. He said, son, today we get to stop. You're the man and you have a great opportunity to play. Go get him tonight. He said, you're right, Dad. It's been quite a journey, Dwayne. All right, thank you very much. That's his dad right there in the white shirt. Proud to have his son, Tim, in the major leagues and essentially coming back to his hometown with the Rays. Well, it's always a thrill for a player, as you know. But B.A., you know what it's like for the family as well. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I can imagine what everybody is going through, Tim included, getting a chance to come back home to the team that more than likely you grew up rooting for, and now you're a big leaguer in that stadium. It is a surreal moment, probably even more so for the family than it is for, for Tim Beckham uh, because of that story that Emily just told about the driving by, and all of a sudden, wow, now we stop, and you're a player. Fantastic. Well, his dad, Jimmy, uh, heading up a, a group of uh, over 30 out here for this game and the homecoming of Tim Beckham. Krasinski out on strikes. Now it's Simmons up there. Short center. Kiermaier is there. And that's the second out. That's a festive occasion in that section down there where the Beckhams are, and it should be. Uh, a block of 30 all together? <laughs> oh, wait, wait till he gets in the game. Oh, yeah. Wait until he gets in the game. They're going to go crazy. And listen, I think that you know, smart move by Kevin Cash not starting him this game because the odds are if you come off the bench for the Rays. Oh, yeah. Well, that's where all the hits are. 
they're hitting 400. It's ridiculous. I mean, the bench leads the team in RBIs. <laughs> and we're not talking about Johnny Bench. We're talking about the Rays bench. Well, they're swinging it like Johnny. What do they have? 22 RBIs? 22. You yeah. know who the next closest team is? Cleveland Indians with nine <laughs> in the American League. Wow. Pitch hits Maven. One-one pitch, and Maven heads to first. Second and, batter Ramirez is hit tonight. And, and this is the one that you don't like for the simple reason that you want Fultonavich to be leading off next inning. If he still is in the game, you want that nine hole, and no reason to think that he won't be. You want him leading off next inning, not coming up to bat now. Yeah, that's really a big part of the strategy in the National League. Try to situate it so that the pitcher has to lead off the next inning. Not going to happen now. Pitch is a strike to Fulton Davids. One and one. A ball and two strikes. And strike three call. Man left on in the fourth inning. We go to the fifth. Steven Susan Jr. is two for two tonight. Will lead off the fifth for the Rays. Great moment in Rays history presented by Geico, and it was on this day when Aubrey Huff fell to a 10th inning walk-off home run for the Devil Rays as they defeated their Citrus Series rivals, the Florida Marlins, 5-4. to four. Looks like he's taking a beating, too, in the middle of that pile. Yeah, Toby Hall in there. And Travis Lee in there too in that scrum. A Johnny Gomes sighting. Yes. We may get he one led of those the charge. Here. <laughs> when doesn't he? Absolutely. Wherever he is, he has number one a great impact. And and frankly, the Braves are happy to have him. And that's a big reason they want him here. Sousa fouls it back. Strike one. We mentioned the new faces here in Atlanta. 
his veteran presence but also something of uh, an implied enforcer in the clubhouse in terms of effort with the young players being filtered in here you know, intensity aggressiveness and playing the game correctly yep. and holding people accountable that's a big part of it Sousa so out on strikes Well, a big turnover, and you can see left to right, Justin Upton. So they had a lot of home runs go to the West Coast. Melvin Upton Jr. still with that left foot, and the Padres trying to get him back. Kimbrell at the uh, end of games. With that ERA in the mid fives right then. One strike to count on Evan Longoria. That's a strike, and Evan Gaddis also could join that group of four impact players who are gone. Cut the miss, and Longoria is out on strikes. Golden Avich, who had four strikeouts coming into this inning, getting Rivera, the number eight hitter, twice, and Ramirez twice, but here. In the fifth, he has struck out Sousa Jr. and Longoria. Well, how about the breaking ball there? And Evan realized halfway through the swing that this was not going to go very well. Late break. Here's James Loney. Loney one for two. Ball, no strikes. Two and oh. Fastball for a strike. Two and one. Well, the Yankees have added two in the fifth. They now lead the Nationals six to two in the top of the fifth in Washington. Three one now on James Loney. Logan Forsyth would be next. This may be one of those situations that we see James Loney turn it loose. Can't be surprised. Yeah, no, yeah, he'll pick his spots. This could be one of them. And he draws the walk. It's amazing how quickly his mind registers ball and how disciplined he stays. 3 1. You know you're getting the heater and you know you want to turn it loose. You get the heater. It's not that far off the plate, but yet he doesn't even flinch. You know, we so often talk about pitches that are not a strike from the time they leave the pitcher's hands. Not all hitters can pick that up. He picks it up immediately. On the borderline mm -hmm. ones. You know, I mean, yep. it, a ball comes out low. You, it's not going to rise, so you oh. know it's going to. To the backstop there on a wild pitch. I mean, wild pitch. Hey, oh. Well, Krasinski heading out now to talk to his young starter after walking Loney. How about that yank piece in the mid 90s? How about this carom? And a barehanded pick by Krasinski, but I'm just telling the young right hander that he's too old to reach that far across his body. <laughs> Or something very similar. <laughs> and something to do with somebody's body. How about this battery, though? Fultonavich and Pierzynski. Can I imagine the word scramble you could do with these mm -hmm. two guys? How many words could you make out of those two names combined? 
I guarantee you more than I could come up with. <laughs> It's 3 and 0. Oh. Well, here's the thing with a young pitcher like Paul Denevich that the Braves are going to have to go through as they try to develop him. He comes out, gets ahead of Sousa Jr. and Longoria, and dispatches them 1 2. Longoria out on three pitches. Then the walk to Loney, a wild pitch. It's 3 and 0 oh now, and there's a strike to Forsyth. It, that, that's what. Is mind boggling and frustrating with a young power arm. They'll come out, like you just said, and then the wheels start to get wobbly, like immediately, out of nowhere. Line past Syriaco in the left, and here comes Loney to the plate. Cunningham falls down. The Rays get the run and take the lead. Boy, that's what will drive you crazy. As a pitching coach and a manager, just what we talked about, and then 3 1, it's going to end up costing them at least one run. Forsyth rips one to left. Cunningham would have had a shot here, but he absolutely gets snipered. Right here. There's the crack. So Loney scores the go ahead run. Roger McDowell to the mound. And Forsyth with RBI number 18. Reminder Sunday's family fun day at the Trop. The Raves host the Athletics. And after the game, singer songwriter Cody Simpson performs his top hits. All fans will have access to the field for the concert at no extra cost. Call 888 Fan Raves or visit RavesBaseball.com. Raise up. And do it now and get those tickets now because you look at that photo right there. He doesn't look, he looks sad. <laughs> so go support him. Here's David DeJesus. Foresight. Back in at first. It's good to see you care so much. Well, I mean, look at him. He had his guitar. He's walking down what looked to be a really nice road, head kind of down. This is a little down the dumps. A little pensive. All the more reason for the good fans of the Tampa St. Pete area to come out to support him and the team. Yeah. We got uh, Oakland coming in, then Seattle. My phone's ringing, Dwayne. You're going to have to excuse <laughs> me for a minute. Go ahead. Take as much time as you need. One strike to count to DeJesus and another move to first. Forsyth is back in. Two outs into the fifth. Soft pitch is in there and it puts DeJesus down 0 2. Strikes. Testing the limits of that strike zone with that fastball. And you see pitch number two called a strike. Take a little further out. And that's an area where Tony Randazzo will give a pitcher to a left handed hitter. He'll give that pitch off the plate sometimes. Fly ball center. May have been going back. That's going to be over his head. Will one hop the wall. Forsyth with a full head of steam is going to score standing, and the Rays now have a two run lead on a double off the bat of DeJesus that just would not stop carrying out there in left center field. It's five to three. David DeJesus looking for something out over the plate, and he got it, and boy, did he put a charge into it. He stayed back very well on that back leg and really drove that ball out there, and that's what allowed it to get over the head of Maben, and now. Boy, after those first two quick strikeouts by Fultonavich, all of a sudden the wheels get wobbly, and now 
looking to come off. Well, it appeared that the Reigns had no chance when he disposed of Sousa Jr. and Longoria in such short order. Cabrera, who belted that big home run to right field, a tremendous blast off the Rays shortstop's bat. He's up here now with De Jesus in scoring position. Two run inning after two men had been retired. And a chance for another run. One and one. Action in the bullpen. Trevor Cahill down there. Two and one. Cut the miss. Xavier Cedeno is now up in the raise bullpen. Ramirez has gone through the Atlanta lineup twice now. And there's ball three to Cabrera. Second to Jesus. And a cut the miss. Breaking ball. Three and two. And Cabrera is out on strikes. Ray score two and take a 5 3 lead. Inning five in Atlanta. Sunday is family fun day at the Trop. The Rays host the Oakland Athletics, and kids 14 and under receive a Rays camo tank top while supplies last. Call 888 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com. Raise up. Top of the batting order up for Atlanta. Chase Peterson. This pitch is a ball. Rosmo Ramirez through four innings had made 67 pitches and he starts the third time through the order. Two and oh. 
Siriaco next and then Freeman. Two balls and a strike. Two and two. Strike three calls. Peterson caught looking. So one away in the bottom of the fifth inning. Let's check in with Emily. David DeJesus has hit 432 in the last 12 games. Before the game, I asked him if he's doing anything differently at the plate. He said nothing. He said nothing has changed. He thinks that maybe the pitcher is just maybe paying attention more because there's runners on base for the Rays a lot more often lately. Or he said his confidence is up there. After his son was born, he went on a nice streak. And he thought it was daddy strength. So I'll let you guys weigh the options if it's just the pitcher being a little distracted or if daddy strength is back. He said, watch out, Kim, which is his wife. No doubt a, an effective combination right there. I, I'm going to go, uh, I, I'm going to lean towards daddy strength with just a pinch of going the other way. <laughs> and working the count as he always does. He's never an easy out up there. Even when he's not as hot as he's been recently. He's still a battling at bat for a pitcher. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you know he's not going to take a, a, an A-B off. And that you're going to have to work to get him. And you may absolutely get him, but it's not going to come easy. Here's that double to left center in the top of the inning. With two strikes. With two strikes, a mistake, and guess what? Left center field. I'm telling you, he's been wearing out that side of the diamond. Get over, get over. Chop right side. Ramirez will have to cover, and he's there. Loney had to range far to his right after that one. Well, I love the way that James Loney, comfortable throwing from just about every position, like a quarterback. And he's got to hit a moving target in Erasmo Ramirez covering first base. There aren't many first basemen who can make this play seem as routine as it turned out to be. Right. And and that, that looks like a, a piece of cake until you get out there in real time and do it. How many times you see guys throw behind the pitcher? The pitcher's got to wait on the throw. Now the pitch and Freeman hits a long one but foul. Strike one. Freeman with a couple of line outs into the shift. Tried to hit it over the shift that time. And he's headed out of play. It's going to try left field. The Rays got five innings out of Ramirez and 68 pitches his last time out on the 14th. That was against the Yankees in a 6 to 2 win. He's one out away from five innings in this one. And he strikes out the big first baseman, Freddie Freeman, with a fastball through five. The Rays lead 5 3.
five runs for the Rays. Steven Souza opened the scoring with its RBI single in the first. Well, and then they just continue to keep the, the pressure on as the Rays. And Longoria going back up the hill. That was after a stolen base by Souza Jr. Then Cabrera with this mammoth shot in the fourth inning, keeping the pressure on. Fultonavich, another one here. And this was the inning, really, that, that came apart for him, where he got the first two guys with strikeouts, and then all of a sudden the Rays come alive. Oh, walk, a couple of hits, David DeJesus, and the Rays able to take a two-run lead now as we head into the sixth. And they'll be seeing a new pitcher here. Trevor Cahill takes over. And Rene Rivera looks at a fastball too high. Ramirez due next as Cahill's on for his ninth appearance. And the sixth out of the bullpen. One and one. Ramirez due to hit. But Tim Beckham has a bat and has emerged from the dugout to the on deck circle. Little tapper back toward the hill and the toss to Rivera. And now Tim Beckham will make his way to the plate to pinch hit for Ramirez. We know the section that's very excited right now. Beckham with his family and friends of 30 here tonight and he hits a ground ball breaks his bat and Siriaco at third base throws him out so Beckham went after the first pitch and is out third to first they'd waited a long time to see him the number one pick in fact he was he was the first overall number one pick out of the state of Georgia since Mike Ivey in 1970. And the Rays drafted him first in 2008. Ground ball off the bat of Kiermaier. He's thrown out. Three ground balls by Cahill. And the Rays are up and down in order in the sixth. Five three Rays. Bottom of the sixth and a rest ball. Ramirez gave the Rays five good innings tonight. Well, he absolutely did. You know, a little bit of a stumble in the second inning, but he was responded after that. And I'll tell you, he finished his last three innings of work. He faced one over the minimum, had a hit batter, hit Maven 
in the fourth inning. But outside of that, he ended up tidying up that outing, and the Rays were able to take the lead during his outing. So he stands in, in line right now to pick up a win if the bullpen can lock this thing down. And Xavier Cedeno will come on for the 10th time, the first man up to try and do just that. He has been very impressive in his tenure with the Rays. Six and the third innings, six strikeouts, a couple of walks, opponents average at 217, but he has done everything that the Rays have asked of him. So Cedeno's on to face the left-handed bat of Nick Markakis, beginning the bottom of the sixth. Marquez walked and scored in the three-run second. And the pitch is high. Cedeno pitched an inning Sunday. Against Minnesota had a one two three inning picked up a strikeout two and one it's the ability to move the fastball around the zone but then that sweeping breaking ball he stays closed mechanically so he's not exposing his hand and allowing the hitters a good look at that pitch any pitch for that matter stays closed and surprises them. Cake is ahead in the count. Three and one. Todd Cunningham, who's arrived and has been red hot, is on deck. The left handed bat of the veteran A.J. Przinski follows him. That's a strike. Three balls, two strikes. Down to third, and a nice pick by Longoria, and a nice scoop on the other end by Loney. That takes care of Marquez. Boy, on the fly there. I thought you were going to go with pick twice. Nice pick by Longoria. Nice pick by James Loney. And that's absolutely right. I'll tell you, uh, James, excuse me, Evan Longoria had no time to think here. As Marquez goes the other way, he's got to go to his knees on a backhand. And watch how quickly he gets rid of this. And there's Loney on the other end with that scoop. And here is Todd Cunningham. One. Boy, Cedeno has been so consistent out there for the Rays. It's been a nice addition. Mongoria settling under this pop up. Two outs. Wrap up game of the road trip tomorrow night. Here's what's coming up on Rays Live tomorrow. The pregame show presented by your Gulf Coach Honda dealers. We'll hear from Jake Odorizzi. He'll be the starting pitcher. And tomorrow is another Web Wednesday. Well, they seem to roll around every week. <laughs> they do. It's Just keep coming. It's documented. <laughs> Here's A.J. Przinski. All no strikes. Fly ball to right. Souza back, and that ball got the better of him over his head. Krasinski's on his way to second, and he's in there standing. Susan got turned around a little bit out there at right field. Yes, he did. And he was running constantly at an angle, trying to time this line drive up. It kept carrying. We saw that off the bat of David DeJesus, the ball carrying well. 
He gets kind of turned, turned. That's an odd angle to be running at and trying to make a play at the same time. And burns him up against the wall, and the, the Braves have a two-out threat. Well, Simmons is due up. Kevin Cash out of the dugout. And the Rays are going to make a pitching change here. Cedeno retires too, leaves with a man on. Back in a moment. Game worn opening day jersey. Now through Sunday, the 24th, the Rays are auctioning off game worn opening day jerseys with proceeds benefiting the Rays Baseball Foundation. Visit RaysBaseball.com slash auction to place your bid. Brandon Gomes, the new Rays pitcher. Evangelist Simmons. Do up. He has walked and has hit a fly ball to center. And as Gomes is on for the 13th time. The walk for Simmons in the second inning came with the bases loaded, giving him his 17th run batted in. Gomes inherits Brzezinski out at second base. Jones worked Friday in the opening game of the series at Minnesota. Pitched one inning. A pop up. Longoria into foul territory. That retires the side. We head into the seventh inning. 5 3 Rays.
look at the breakdown here of the Rays with Evan Longoria when he's in there. Well, how often have we said Evan Longoria is going to have to lead this team, lead this offense, if they want to get where they play in October baseball? And I don't know. Can't go much further than those numbers right there. And tonight, he has a hit and a run batted in. He'll hit second in the seventh. Susie Jr. And the first pitch is a strike. Susie is two for three tonight. Out on three pitches. Trey Hill came out, got three ground ball outs in the sixth, and now a strikeout to open this inning. Fulton David started the Rays, got five off him, eight hits in five innings. There's a ball. Fly ball deep to right, but Marquez will have room on the track. Two outs. We get James Loney to the plate. Third, Suriaco comes up and makes the throw. Another one, two, three inning for Cahill. Six in a row. The Rays lead 5 3. Kevin Kiermeyer in center, and their defensive work has been on display. This running catch by Kiermeyer, our H.H. Gregg defensive plays of the night. And then Evan Longoria on the other end in the infield, just the two that you would expect to be leading the way defensively, getting it done here for the Rays tonight. 
to just 15 errors. They share the fewest errors in the American League with the Detroit Tigers. You put good pitching out there and support it with good, solid defense. And that's what the Rays have done. And they're within a game of first in the American League East. And the uh, Washington Nationals have just tied the Yankees, by the way, in the bottom of the sixth. As Kevin Jepson takes over on the hill in the bottom of the seventh for the Rays. His first pitch to Cameron Maven inside. Ramirez for five, Sedano two thirds, Gomes a third, and now Maven. And there at the knees, one and one. Two balls and a strike. Maben, originally a first round pick by the Tigers, he was with the Marlins for a stretch. And then most recently, San Diego before coming to the Braves in early April. And he's ahead of the count three and one. It's been his goal to cut down on strikeouts. Strike and it's three and two. Kevin Seitzer's the hitting coach here for the Atlanta Braves. See Jake McGee up in the bullpen there for the Rays. Maven takes and that's ball four wide, so he walks to open the inning. will pinch hit Roberto is going to pinch hit for the pitcher Cahill. Boy, that look on Jim Hickey's face says it all. I want to avoid the late game leadoff walks down at the bottom of the order. Pitch is a strike. Look how close Kayaspo is to the plate, hanging right over the inside edge. It's one and one. And I'll tell you what, throughout his career as a switch hitter, he's been a lot better. Right handed hitter than left handed hitter, although this year just one out of 16 from the right side, and that's doing a better job left handed getting the opportunity here. And he's always been a good contact man. Jepson now two and one with him. Well, he gets a good look at these pitches. You, know, you see his setup, he's hanging right out over the plate. He's gonna try to stay short with the swing. In his favor. And Jimson is behind him, three and one after walking Maven. Okay, Kevin Jimson, I'll tell you, when we saw him at the beginning of the year, he was automatic. He came out and he was just dialed in, getting outs at a quick pace. But these last few outings, it's been the lack of command. That has been the most concerning. The stuff's still there. We still see the break on the on the curveball, the good velocity on the fastball. He's just not getting the pitches to the spots that he wants to. Coming into this one, in his last five outings, he's walked five men and he's given up a walk to Maven here. And he's behind Kyospo. And walks to a guy who comes into high leverage situations late in games. Not a good thing. They are troubling. No, when you bring those kind of guys, it typically, like you said, it's late and the game's close. Can't have the extra base runners. They've been back in. That's 
It's a strike. Kiaspo ready to go to first. And Freddy Gonzalez not all together happy with the call. Now, typically when a guy is struggling with command, the borderline pitch he does not get. That ball down in the zone. Right on the edge and it goes Jepson's way. Lifted into the left. The Jesus is there to catch it. And that's the first out. That's a big out, especially after the leadoff walk and then falling behind the pinch hitter. And very easily could have been a walk to Kiasma. It yep. could be first and second with nobody right now going back to the top of the order. But Jepson gets that borderline call that records the out. is a strike. Yeah, you'll take the strikes down there at the bottom of the zone. Kid me. Just live down there. One and one. Grab the lead with two runs in the fifth. And that's two balls and a strike. Mo Ramirez worked the front five. Sedeño Gomes and now Jepson. And he is behind Peterson. Three and one. He's been behind all three hitters in this inning. Syriaco's on deck. Been an absolute struggle to try to get that ball. And it's not like the, the misses are way off, just a little bit. Popped into short left again. And De Jesus makes the catch for the second out. And this is a prime example of where stuff wins. Kevin Jepson has put himself in really bad position for three straight hitters. Walks the first one and retires the next two on soft flies to left. Good velocity on the heater. The pitch is missed by the hitter. Pedro Siriaco is grounded out, flied out, and grounded out again. I think we're all done with the high wire act, though. <laughs> How about just an 0 2 and put this thing away? Snap throw to first. Runner back in. First pitch to Siriaco up. They've been the base runner. Cut the miss. Hard stuff there and right by him at 94. about hit Atlanta eight to three they lead five to three and they cut the miss again hard stuff for the second straight time trying to make stuff win once again and he's done it the last two pitches Heavy dose of fastballs here by Kevin Jepson. Kevin 
get another one right here. And he fouls this one back. It was the fastball. You can see everything up with something on it. And we've seen him working down also. So these, this is obviously the plan here against Syriaco, unless all of a sudden now you come with that hard biting curveball. Uh, no. And another foul on the fastball up. You know, this is where as a pitcher you really have to believe in the game plan because throwing fastballs to the same area of the strike zone time and time and time again you're saying when's the adjustment going to be made or can he not is he not able to make that adjustment well he did not catch up on the first two swing and misses now he's fouled a couple away so you figure he's making a little progress <laughs> yes he is <laughs> and there's that curveball and he fouls that one and, and it wasn't a very sharp one. You know, curveball a lot of times more of a field pitch than a slider. Although you could make the case for Kevin Jepson that his curveball is almost a slider as hard as he throws it. But he has stayed with the hard stuff here in this inning. And I would imagine that you'll see another one up right here. Not going to probably go back to that curveball. Yes, they are. Man on, two outs, one to the count. And he got him. Foul tip strikeout. Went away with a fastball to strike him out. No runs, a walk, and a man left. Braves up by two. Up five to three as Ruble Cabrera hit what might have been the longest ball hit out so far to right field this year here in Atlanta for his second home run of the year. The Rays had scored in the first, the third, and then he got the home run to lead off the fourth inning. That tied the game, and the Rays put up two in the fifth. An RBI base hit by Logan Forsyth, and then a double by David DeJesus. And we go into the eighth inning. The Rays will face the 24 year old left hander, Luis Avilan, on for his 20th appearance. And in the eighth, it'll be Logan Forsyth, the first Ray to face him. His first pitch 
is a fastball for a strike. That one in at 95. And he'll average 93 or so with that fastball and pop 95 on occasion. Upstairs, one and one. Last year, an earned run average of over four and a half, and they say he struggled with command of the breaking ball a lot, but you can see he has a good arm. Well, we've seen uh, that 95 mile an hour fastball followed up by two change ups back to back at 82. You start to think of the possibilities of a guy that can throw in the mid 90s, have a good change up, tighten up that breaking ball. Speed away, and it's two and two. Saw Nick Massett out there in the bullpen. He just joined the Braves. There's ball three, missing with a fastball. Count is full. Brandon Geyer has emerged on deck. A miss. Forsyth out on strikes. So with one away in the eighth inning, let's check in with Emily Austin one more time. Emily? You two are never going to believe it. I found myself another Budweiser deck. <laughs> we want to remind all of you Rays fans to stay with us after the game for Rays Live postgame show presented by Checkers. We'll have Kevin Cash's postgame press conference. I'll be in the clubhouse for interviews. Arrestus and Todd will be in the studio breaking down the game, and then we'll also check back in with you guys. Dwayne and B.A. in the booth. Back to you. All right. Thank you. Emily's drawing a crowd out there as well. Yeah, she has. She has. it, and, and it's Budweiser deck late in the game, and we know, you know, we've got to get to the clubhouse. Well, here's Geyer going after the first pitch and putting a charge into that one. But Cunningham out there by the 380 marker hauled it in. The guy who pinch hitting wasn't wasting any time and came up just a little bit short there on a long drive. And speaking of long drives, our Yellowwood bringing the lumber. Well, that was as Drupal Cabrera back in the fourth inning. And here is that long drive. That was with two strikes also. And that ball got driven with authority. Remember the reaction of Nick Markakis. There barely was one. Pitch away as Cabrera hits from the right side this time. Two outs in the eighth. I'm surprised they let Emily in to the Budweiser deck close to last call. <laughs> Late night crowd to draw. Here in the eighth. Hot shot liner down to third. Caught by Syriaco. The Rays are up and down. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the eighth, and the Rays lead by three.
7 p.m. Eastern. It's the return of baseball night in America on Fox as the Orioles battle the Marlins. Coverage begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on your home for baseball every Saturday. Fox and Fox Sports 1. Brandon Geyer stays on to play left field. And Jake McGee will make his second appearance of the year. Jake worked in Sunday's game coming off the DL and was very impressive with two strikeouts. Looking like the Jake McGee of old. Like he never left. And you're right. Everything the same. The velocity the same. The pitching style the same. The results the same. He faces Freddie Freeman. And the pitch is a strike. Cut the miss at 94-02. Yeah, the, and the, the, the look of that pitch and the swing by Freeman set harder. And McGee, I'll tell you, the ball just absolutely jumps out of his hand. And a cut the miss. That one at 96. And he strikes out Freeman. You know, and, and the thing that's so impressive about it is what do you think these hitters are thinking when they go to the plate? They know they're getting the heater. They know they're getting a fastball that's not going to have much movement on it at all. Stays pretty true. And yet, most of the time, they can do nothing about it. Pretty impressive. This is Nick Markakis. The pitch is a strike to him. So four straight strikes for McGee. You see, Marquez has had success against Jake. Four out of eight with a couple of strikeouts. One and one. It's out of play. Goes the count to one and two. Johnny Gomes. Ray is on deck. He'll pinch hit next for Cunningham. Now cut the miss. Tight him up with a fastball inside at 96. Two up and two down. Very quiet mechanics by Jake McGee before he unleashes that lightning bolt of a heater. Without tell you what, when you watch the ball come out of the hand, the recognition by Marcakis, and when he finally starts his swing, you know he's already in big, big trouble. Did not get it started soon enough. Now Johnny Gomes. Gomes in a Braves uniform. After splitting last year between Boston and Oakland. One and all the count. Bounds it back. Gearing up for the fastball. One and one. As you know, up through the Rays system, a big part of the 08 season. Up and away. Two balls and a strike. 235 with the Rays, 66 
of his career home runs coming in a Rays uniform. Trying to catch up there and he could not. It's 2-2. Two -two. Gomes now has 158 career home runs in the big leagues. Foul the fastball that was up and he fouled it back. Well, that, that's either going to tick Jake McGee off that fastball up with that, which is one of his staples, and he may try to go up a little bit higher here, or you may see that deuce. Haven't seen it the entire inning. This would be the time if you were going to go to it after fastball up would be the time. And the fastball that stroked into center of a set. You know, and, and the only reason that you even think that way is because if Johnny Gomes was able to time up the elevated heater and get a piece of it, you either have to go up a little higher or go to something else. And Jake McGee doesn't often do that, and Johnny Gomes was making progress there. He got a fastball a little further down in the zone, and he was all over it. He gets it started a little sooner and goes right back up the middle. Shorten the swing. That's a great shot right there. Here's A.J. Przinski. Takes ball one. Przinski's been on twice tonight. Chops it to the right side. Forsyth makes the play. Atlanta out of the eighth. We go to the ninth. Braves lead by three. Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology with Cancer Strike, Strike Back with Cyberknife by Kubota. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to FloridaKubotaDealers.com and buy your Gulf Coast Honda dealer. Rays in Atlanta tonight, first of a two-game interleague set, and the Rays carry a 5-3 lead into the ninth inning. Johnny Gomes stays on to play left field after pinch hitting. And Nick Massett will be the new pitcher for Atlanta, their fourth of the night. Massett, 33 years old, agreed to terms with the Braves. And after making eight game, eight appearances, eight games with the Marlins this year, and a 186 ERA now becomes a member of the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, some interesting numbers there. You know, only one walk, had six strikeouts, 
in his innings, nine and two thirds or so, but a 324 batting average against. Able to wiggle out of some jams, apparently. Rene Rivera swings and he misses. Strike one. He's a Two to Rivera. Now a ball, two strikes. Brad Boxberger up in the bullpen. Nick Franklin has moved on deck. Breaking ball bounce foul. Still one and two. New York batting in the uh, top of the eighth in Washington in a tie game, 6 6 with the Nationals. Orioles have a 9 4 lead on the Mariners in the top of the ninth at Baltimore. Foul out of play. Boston playing at home against Texas. The Rangers batting in the top of the eighth. That's four to two Red Sox. Angels beat the Blue Jays three to two in Toronto. Two and two. Back to the breaking ball. And Rivera is out on strikes. Boy, Massett took a little something off that one, and he not only was able to fool Rene Rivera with the pitch, but also the speed of the pitch. Bigger break, slower velocity. Nick Franklin will bat for Jake McGee, who gave the Rays one inning, one hit, no runs, a couple of strikeouts. Franklin takes it down. Ray starting the day a game back of New York in the AL East. Liner into right and Marcakis makes the catch. Two gone. The Rays have been playing here, and we've been keeping an eye on that Yankees Nationals game in Washington. As we mentioned, tied 6 6 now at the bottom of the eighth. Washington in a similar situation with the Rays. They're trailing a New York team in the East. The Mets lead the National League East by one game over Washington. And the Yankees, of course, a game up in the AL East over the Rays. Breaking ball and a strike call to Kiermaier. Chop to the right side. Peterson at second base makes the play. A one, two, three, ninth for Massett. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth of the Rays leading five to three.
the ninth inning. They got five innings from Erasmo Ramirez and they turned it over to the bullpen. Brad Boxberger in trying to close it out. Now the Rays bullpen, you know, they got off to a slow start this season and now are one of the best in the game of baseball. You see Kevin Jepsen was walking a fine line and he came out smelling like a rose. Jake McGee got his job done. Xavier Cedeno a part of that. Brandon Gomes on for a hitter. And so far three perfect innings and looking for a fourth and going to the man who has been absolutely stellar for the Rays and closing games out 10 out of 10 with an ERA of 1.29 in 15 games. So here we go. Anderson. Simmons will lead off for Atlanta. Cameron Maben do next. And they go down to the ninth spot in the order. And the pitch is down. Simmons shortened on the bat. Simmons walked with the bases loaded in the Three runs second inning. That gave them their first run of the game. Otherwise, 0 for 2. Into the screen foul. Now 1 and 1. One ball, two strikes. Up, foul ball. Rivera to the screen. Will he have room? No. Count holds at a ball and two strikes. Raised with a two-run lead in the ninth inning. Ball chopped toward the middle. Backhand pick. Throw to first. And what a play by Logan Forsyth. By the bag at second. That is out number one. And a nifty play indeed by Forsyth. We talk an awful lot about Logan Forsyth. What he's done offensively for the Rays with the increase in playing time. Well, guess what? It translates defensively too. Showing good range there. Backhanding that ball. Throwing across the body on the run at an odd angle. He has been stellar defensively at a number of positions second base mainly we've seen him at first we've seen him over at third now it's Maben Cameron Maben taking a strike Strike. Boxberger last worked on the 13th, picking up his 10th save, and the 3 to 2 went over the Yankees. Ahead of Maven of all the two strikes. Donis Garcia is on deck. Five ball into right. Susan Jr. back and makes the catch. Two gone. 
Souza Jr. being tested again on a hard hit ball out there to right field, but this time the correct angle, the correct read, and he puts it away easily. Well, here's Garcia, pinch hitting for the pitcher Massett. Garcia just up from Triple A. He was hitting 351 in the minor leagues. Pitch outside of all and no strikes. System last year. It's Scranton. There's a strike in the upper part of the zone. <laughs> Rene Rivera was like, okay, I appreciate the fact there was a strike. I was expecting the heater. <laughs> Big cut to miss. Baseball and the count is two balls, two strikes. You know that Garcia can handle the fastball, but when you get that slow changeup by Boxberger previously, he was a day late on that one. And just a little bit of that one foul. So we'll do it again on two and two. on the heels of the Sunday win over the Twins 11 to 3 lead 5 to 3 in this one and the Rays are winners cut the miss by Garcia three up and three down in the ninth inning and the Rays take the first game of this two game set in Atlanta it's a 5-3 final here Ramirez will pick up the win he's 2 and 1 Walter Davids is the loser. His record is two and one. And Brad Boxberger picks up his 11th save of this season. And the Rays are now even on this road trip with two wins and two losses. Well, here it is. A couple of fastballs previously, and then goes Garcia. You get him sped up, and then here's the changeup. He thinks he's all over it and he is out in front and over the top and that would finish off what turns out to be four stellar innings by the Rays bullpen and picking up Erasmo Ramirez and pulling out the win in the opener.